Ashley, my name is Rita. I'm going to be a nurse today. I'm going to be doing an assessment of your heart and neck vessels. For the assessment, um, I will need you to bare your chest so I can better see your precordium and hear your heart sound. For purposes of the video, she's going to remain um, in her shirt, however, in a hospital setting, she would need to bare her chest. Um, also, during the assessment, I'm going to be listening to several different areas of your heart. I just want you to know that so you don't think anything's wrong. Um, You'll also be required to assume several different positions so that way I can hear different heart sounds, okay? Any questions? Okay, so I'm going to start off by inspecting your jugular veins, your, um, your jugular venous pulse. So go ahead and lie flat for me in a supine position. And I'm going to come on your right side. And I'm going to elevate the head of your bed 30 to 45 degrees. And I'm going to make sure your head and torso are on the same plane. Scoot over. There we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my tangible light source so I can make sure I um, can visualize any shadows or pulsations. Go ahead and turn your head to the left. Good. I'm inspecting for your first your um, external jugular vein, which is going to lie right here over your sternoclamastoid muscle. Then I'm going to look at your supersternal notch area where your clavicle, here where your clavicle meets your sternocleidomastoid muscle, and I should be able to see the pulsation of your internal jugular vein, which I do. Good. Turn this way. Good. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and assess your jugular venous pressure. So I'm going to elevate the head of your bed 45, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees, and I'm going to inspect again. So here we are, elevating 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. Turn your head that way. Each degree that I elevate, um, I'm looking for any protrusion, distension, or pulsations, which I shouldn't see any of those if you are 45 degrees or higher, which I don't. Um, now we're going to go ahead and move on to your carotid arteries. Um, I'm going to leave you here in the supine position with the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees. I'm going to use the bell of my stethoscope to first auscultate your carotid arteries so I can make sure I don't slow down your heart rate and change the variation of your beat or mask any sound. So I'm going to use the bell of my stethoscope. Go ahead and turn to the left for me. Good. Hold your breath. Good. Let it out. Turn your head this way, hold your breath, and let it out. Good. So I was listening for um, any type of uh, brewies, which would be a swishing or blowing sound. I didn't hear that. Um, I didn't hear any uh, abnormal variations from beat to beat. I um, also didn't hear any um, weak or bounding pulses, which is good. Um, so that's all normal. So now I'm going to go ahead and palpate your carotid arteries using my index and my middle finger. Turn your head to the left, please. All right, so Ms. Kingsley, what I'm feeling for is any type of abnormal thrills, which is going to feel similar to a cat purr. I'm also um, feeling for decreased elasticity of your arteries, which would also be abnormal, but yours, yours feel fine. I'm also making sure that they are the same um, amplitude on both sides, about a 2 plus, turn, good, and, and they are, they're fine. Anything... Um, you know, anything weak or bounding, once again, would be abnormal. Our differences from, from the beats on each side would be abnormal, but they're not. Um, so we're going to go ahead now that we've done that, and I'm going to move to your precordium. Standing on your right side, I'm going to go ahead and look for your apical impulse. So I'm going to see your apical impulse about um, the fourth or fifth intercostal space at your left midclavicular line. So we'll go ahead and count down. About four. We'll go four. So here we go. So I'm going to look at your apical impulse. I'm making sure that I just see the, the pulsations from the apical impulse and no heaves or lifts, which would be abnormal. I don't see any of those. Now I'm going to go ahead and palpate your apical impulse at the same spot here, left midclavicular line, fourth or fifth intercostal space. I'm going to use two fingers. I'm palpating. Now it should feel about the size of a nickel, about one or two centimeters, and it should be subtle like a gentle tap. Anything, um, I'm looking to see if it's displaced um, greater than one or two centimeters, which would be abnormal, or any, um, any type of uh, bounding or longer duration. It should be about a, a pretty brief duration as well, which it is, so that's good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move to the palmar surface of my hand. Um, so I can go ahead and palpate any abnormal, uh, any abnormal pulsations around your precordium. 
So using the polymer surface on my hand, I'm feeling first at the apex here again. The left sternal border. And then I'm moving to the base of your heart here. The left uh, second intercostal space, left sternal border. Second intercostal space, right sternal border. And I shouldn't hear, feel any vibrations or um, abnormal pulsations. Um, so now we've done that. I'm going to go ahead and listen now. Auscultate. I'm going to first use the diaphragm on my stethoscope at, your, at the apex of your heart to listen to your heart rate. And then I'm going to listen for the rhythm. I want the rate to be between, be between 60 and 90. I mean, I'm sorry, 60 to 100 beats per minute. And I also want the rhythm to be regular. So I'm going to listen for a full minute. All right, and then if I would um, if I would hear any irregular rhythms, I would go ahead and palpate your radial pulse while I'm listening to your um, heartbeat, your apical impulse. I'm sorry, and um, they should be the same. I shouldn't hear any variations. That wouldn't be normal if they were different. Good. So your heart rate is between 60 and 100. If it was slower than 60, you would have been bradycardic. If it was higher than 100, you would have been tachycardic tachycardic and you're not and the rhythm's regular. So now that I've done that, um, also I want to go and I want to differentiate between your S1 and S2 sounds. S1's the love, S2's the dove. So that's good. I've done that. Now I'm going to go ahead and move to auscultate in the different areas of your heart. I'm first going to use the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Then I'm going to move over to my bell because you can hear different sounds using the different parts of the stethoscope. Okay? So... <clears throat> So the, the um, right sternal border, second intercostal space, aortic area. Left sternal border, second intercostal space, pulmonic area. Third intercostal space, left sternal border, herbs point. Fourth intercostal space, left sternal border is the um, tricuspid area. And then the mitral area, fourth or fifth intercostal space, left, uh, sorry, left midclavicular line is the mitral area. Good. And then I would go back and listen as well with the bell of my stethoscope. Um, now, Ms. Kingsley, I was listening for any type of abnormal S1 sounds, which would be um, diminished, accentuated, um, split S1s, or varying. Um, also, uh, I was listening for abnormal S2 sounds, which could be wide, fixed, reverse, accentuated, or diminished. Um, also, S3 sounds, which would indicate atrial gallops, or S4 sounds, which could indicate um, ventricular gallops, or a combination of S3 and S4 sounds, which could be summation gallops. But I didn't hear any of that. Also, I was listening for some friction rubs, didn't hear that. Um, listening for um, ejection clicks, any kind of snaps, none of that. So heard just S1 and S2 sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and have you, um, also didn't hear any blowing or swishing sounds. I'm going to have you go ahead and uh, lay to your left side so I can make sure I only hear S1 and S2 sounds. Sometimes you can hear S3 and S4 in this position that you didn't hear while you were supine. So I'm going to use the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Roll a little bit more at the apex of your heart. Good. And only hear S1 and S2, no S3 or S4 sounds. Good. So now I'm going to get you to sit up and lean forward for me. Again, I'm going to listen to the apex of your heart, making sure I only hear S1 and S2, no S3 or S4 sounds. All right. Apex of the heart. Exhale. Good. And only hear normal S1 and S2 sounds. All right. Well, that concludes our assessment. Do you have any questions? All right, thank you for your time.